Hello class, welcome to the lecture for 5-2. We are really getting into polynomials now. And you saw last time that polynomial long division is a very complicated and cumbersome tool. It is really going to get you the answer, but it really can take a lot of work. And we have a shortcut that we can use that works for certain kinds of things to make it a lot easier. Big picture, we're trying to solve polynomials. We're trying to figure out when their zeros are, when do they cross the x-axis, and how can we figure out what they're made out of? Where did they come from? What's the building blocks going into this? So we need to discuss a better solution than polynomial long division, which is synthetic division. So you remember last time we did uh, x cubed minus 9x squared minus x plus 105, and we wanted to divide that by uh, x minus 6. And you can do that the long way with polynomial long division, or you can do it the short way with synthetic division. Synthetic division is just a simplified process where you say, I'm going to take the coefficients off my polynomial, and there's a 1 there, and a negative 9 there, and a negative 1 there, and a 105 there. Now the part where you're going to screw up, where you're going to make a mistake, is there's going to be a term missing. So for example, if this had gone straight from x cubed minus x plus 105, you have to recognize, oh, there's no x squared, I need to put a 0 there. But you're going to fall for that. So be careful, don't forget that there are every term must be accounted for, every degree must be accounted for. In this case, they're all here, but you might forget some coefficients of zero if they're not there. Okay, so those are the coefficients. And then we draw a half box around them. And now we're going to write off to the side the opposite of what we were doing over here. Where we had been dividing by x minus 6, we're going to do synthetic division with 6. The negative of that, the flip of that. And this synthetic division only works when you're dividing by a simple binomial of a linear degree. That you're saying, I'm going to divide by x minus, the book says, x minus c, so then we can do synthetic division with the number c. But this only works for simple stuff. You can't divide by a quadratic with synthetic division or anything more complicated like that. Okay? So the way this process works is you drop down the first number. It just gets a free pass and it's one. And then the pattern over and over again is that we are going to, and you'll hear me say this a lot, multiply up, add down. That this is the mantra for synthetic division. Over and over again, you need to say that. So six times one is six, and then add down, you get negative three. Multiply up, you get negative 18. Add down, you get negative 19 multiply up, you get negative 114, add down, you get negative 9. Okay? So those four numbers then, just like we simplified at the beginning and just ripped off coefficients, these two are now coefficients. We've just done division, but instead of writing all the x cubes and x squareds and x's, we've just been able to skip straight to the answer. And this last one is the remainder. So I like to draw a box around that to help me remember that this is the remainder. So if that is the remainder and then these are coefficients, this must mean that that's x squared and x and 19. Remainder negative 9. So what that means then is that you can do a long division problem very quickly and say that x cubed minus 9x squared minus x plus 105 equals, oh, divided by x minus 6 equals x squared minus 3x minus 19 minus 9 over x minus 6. That that is the way to do long division quick. Hopefully most of these things here in 5-2 are review, that you've seen all this before when you've dealt with polynomials in the past. The big picture about any given polynomial is that if you zoom out far enough, and we can actually do this in the calculator, is that they just sort of look like what degree that they are. That if you have an x to the third, and you may have a bunch of other terms, 
but ultimately it's either going to go up at one end and down at the other or vice versa and all that stuff in between when you zoom out far enough just sort of fades from view. Um, the same is true with x squared, x to the fourth, even exponents, that they either go up at both ends or down at both ends um, depending upon the leading coefficient. So you can see here we assume, you know, most of the time the leading coefficient is positive. That's easier to deal with. So you'll end up with a cubic uh, or fifth or seventh degree function looking positive and odd. But then we also can have a negative leading coefficient, which would flip that upside down. And even is normally up at both ends unless the leading coefficient is negative and then it's down at both ends. Big picture end behavior. So what about those twists and turns? So that's, there's the big picture. That's pretty obvious. This is a cubic with negative cubic, negative quartic, positive quintic, negative quintic, you know, whatever it is. Big picture is pretty obvious. What about when we zoom in and try to look at the details? Well, so when you look at quadratic functions, and these are all quadratic functions, they've got two branches that are, it's called. There's two sides to it, two parts before it sort of changes direction, before it was going top down and then bottom up, that there's two branches for quadratic. When you get to cubic, you can see here, especially the, the biggest one here, this dotted one, it's got three branches. It's, it's coming up, then it's going down, and then it's going up. You might not be able to tell that with just the plain y equals x cubed, but the most number of branches it can have is three. It might have less, uh, but it's, it's going to have at most three. And of course, quartic then is going to have at most four, and an nth degree polynomial is going to have n or less branches. So what we're saying there is that the number of branches is less than or equal to the degree. And these extrema, they're called, these local maxes and local mins, happen somewhere in between, uh, between the ends. So looking at this first one here, this is uh, probably a cubic equation, degree 3, and it's only got one real zero. That those places, those extrema where it changed direction, those come about because there are imaginary solutions, but the, the time where it crosses the x-axis, the solutions, the zeros, are the only place where we're going to get real uh, answers. But if we move that cubic graph down, we could get 3. So we're going to get at most as many uh, real zeros as the degree, but it's probably going to be less than that, that some of our solutions are going to be imaginary. Last example here, you can see that there are one, two, three, four, five branches on this one, so it's probably a fifth degree, and all five of its zeros are real, so that can happen as well. All right, looking at this graph here, count the branches with me. We've got one, two, three, four. It's going up at both ends, which looks like an even degree possibility. So this is probably a fourth degree polynomial. We've got four branches. It's going up at both ends. It's probably x to the fourth with a positive number in front of it. Um, it crosses the x-axis four times, so it's going to have four real zeros. It's got a positive y-intercept. There's a lot of things that we can tell about this equation without even having the equation in front of us. We can tell a lot of things from the graph. What about this one here? Well, count the branches with me. There's one, two, three, four, five. It's going up at one end and down at the other, so that's a pretty odd behavior. That's like an odd power. So this is probably x to the fifth. That makes sense. It's probably got a positive leading coefficient. It's definitely got a positive y-intercept. And there are three real zeros. So we would expect there to be two imaginary zeros for this particular equation right here. Again, a lot of things we can figure out about something just by looking at the graph without even having the equation. So let's try to draw one ourselves. Let's try to make one here according to their specifications. This is number 14 from 15.2 in the book. This is quartic in degree, has two positive real zeros, two negative real zeros, and a negative x-intercept. All right, so quartic in degree 
means that we've got at most four branches. One, two, three, four. So we're either a W or an M. Those are the fourth degree possibilities. We must have four or less branches. We're going to have two real zeros. So that means we're going to cross over there and over there. Two negative real zeros, so over there and over there. A negative y-intercept, so there. All right, so now if I connect the dots more smoothly than my terrible v's and w's, then, yeah. So that's the shape that it must take. Notice, I cannot cross any more often than that, and this is, if I, if I tur add any more turns, I've increased the number of branches and, the, and or the number of real solutions. So I have to only go through those dots there. Those five dots that I made at the beginning really constrain my behavior, so I have to go down at both ends. So to answer the question that they asked, this must have a negative leading coefficient. So I hope you can see that there's a lot of things that we can see about polynomials just by looking at their graphs, and that once we know some, uh, some x-intercepts that we would like to try, using synthetic division to test those intercepts is really a powerful tool to be able to get the answer quickly. So we'll practice some synthetic division in class. You'll see that there are even more uses of it than I've told you about here, and I'll see you in class.